Hello, I'm Malcolm Cox, and this is the Sunday Sample, recorded for Corporate Worship Matters. And we are in episode 28 today, and we're, I'm recording this as a response to a question I was sent about the appropriateness or otherwise of dancing in our church services. Now, I don't know what your tr church tradition is, but in mine, dancing at least where I am, has not been traditionally part of our expressions of corporate worship. So the, this question was sent to me. Um, are we missing something? Should we be leading, this is written to worship leaders, should we be, as worship leaders, leading the congregation in dance at some point in our services? And this correspondent says, I'm not a dancer myself, but I have to ask this question. And then they list a number of scriptures which talk about dancing and celebrating in a very joyful, expressive, physical way. And it's there in the Old Testament, certainly. So my answer to this, and I suspect this might be a little controversial for some of us, depending on our background, but I would say the answer to is dancing appropriate and should we be leading the congregation in dancing is both yes and no. And I think it depends so much on the particular circumstances of the dancing and of the congregational worship. Psalm 150. Certainly the scripture talks about dancing. Psalm 150 verse 5. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and the lyre. Praise him with timbrel and, there it is, dancing. Praise him with the strings and pipe. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. First Chronicles 15 verse 29 is a warning to those of us who would despise dancers before the Lord. As the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord was entering the city of David, Michal, daughter of Saul, watched from a window. And when she saw King David dancing and celebrating, she despised him in her heart. Read the rest of the story for the sadness that accompanies that despising of David dancing because of what God has done and who he is. Dancing is there. We sing songs about dancing sometimes. One of the famous ones is by Michael Smith. I could sing of your love forever. And I must admit, I, I really do like the song the lyrics generally, but that last part of the bridge, I always struggle with a little bit when we come to it, not being a dancer myself. I have been known to move, but I don't think you could describe it as dancing. So we sing the song, um, over the mountains and the sea, your river runs with love for me, and I will open up my heart and let the healer set me free. Great song. Chorus, I could sing of your love forever, sung four times and then the bridge oh i feel like dancing well often i don't to be perfectly honest i sing that wondering whether i should be physically moving it's foolishness i know yeah it definitely feels like foolishness to me maybe not to other people but i would feel a little foolish when the world has seen the light, they will dance with joy like we're dancing now. Except that I'm not dancing right now, at least not physically. Will I be dancing? If I really had the joy of Jesus in my heart, would I actually be dancing? Am I missing something spiritually? I wonder. So we sing that song and I, I interpret it to mean I'm dancing in my heart rather than physically. And But we do have congregations that dance, don't we? Any of us that have been to places like Africa and other places will know that. I, I had the privilege of visiting the church in Port Elizabeth in South Africa a few years ago. And I had the chance to preach there and the worship was fantastic. And it was a small church and it was in a small room. And actually everybody was dancing. In fact, I think I might have actually been dancing technically because we were all moving the same way at the same time. It was a wonderful experience. And then a few years later, it was my great fortune to be in Ghana in Accra and to worship with the great Accra church there. And there was some dancing there, particularly during the taking of the church collection 
In fact, I'm going to give you a little bit of a, uh, a snippet of the video here. I really enjoyed watching it, being part of it, even though I wasn't particularly dancing myself. So how do we deal with this question of whether dancing is appropriate or not in our own congregations? Uh, let me suggest a few things and one cautionary verse. The cautionary verse is 1 Corinthians 14. It's clear from other scriptures that dancing is permissible. But 1 Corinthians 14 verse 33 says this, for God is not a God of disorder, but of peace, as in all the congregations of the Lord's people. And the congregation in Corinth had many practices which were not honouring God and were distracting uh, proper heartfelt corporate worship, and indeed was bringing God into disrepute for visitors to come in and see such disorder. The disorder wasn't dancing, but disorderly services can create confusion and are not honouring of God. And so we need to think carefully about dancing. Would it be allowed in all and every parts of our services, for example? So three thoughts for us. Firstly, I think this is uh, an issue of culture to some degree. In certain cultures, dancing is just part of life. If you didn't dance, you'd look strange, as opposed to some other cultures where if you did dance, you'd look strange. And looking strange for a Christian is not something that should bother us too much unless it leads people to think less of God or be confused about the message. So I do think culture plays a part. In our multicultural congregations, for example, uh, our church in London and many other parts of the world, then we need to wrestle with this issue. And it's something I think that is more a pastoral issue than a doctrinal one. It depends so much on what uh, um, people in the church and the leadership of that congregation feel is appropriate. I don't think anybody should be denied the opportunity to dance just for the sake of dancing, but if it's not appropriate, that's a different question. For example, someone may say, well, I have the right to dance before the Lord because it's my relationship with God. But we do need to remember that we are a corporate body worshipping together and a certain part of the service, for example, the communion, would it be appropriate when, when someone is speaking? to suddenly get up and dance during the communion talk, where would the focus be? And I think that comes to our next point, which is about context. The context matters. I would suggest that singing some very joyful, upbeat songs is a little bit different from songs that are reflective. And we're actually encouraging, as worship leaders, encouraging the congregation to be reflective. Somebody moving and dancing might hinder that opportunity for the rest of the congregation to reflect appropriately. So context and culture are two considerations, and the third is confusion. As I've already mentioned from 1 Corinthians 14, it's important that our, 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 our corporate worship does not uh, have elements in it that are unnecessarily distracting. It's not that everything has to fit with our culture or the expectations of people who visit, but it is important to consider whether what we're about to do, and what we are participating in uh, with dancing or whatever it is, whether that's getting in the way of the message. I did read in a book about worship a few years ago about a congregation where someone did start dancing and they were asked to sit down. And the rationale behind asking them to sit down was simply that they were drawing attention to themselves. The elders of that congregation knew that that person dancing was not about them worshipping before the Lord. It was really about drawing attention to themselves. Which is why I say I think it's about pastoral concern more than it is a doctrinal issue. So those are some thoughts for us. Um, clearly, if we feel there is a call for dancing or people want to dance, then perhaps we should do some congregational teaching and education on this issue. Dancing it before the Lord is perfectly valid. Is it valid in all and every circumstance? I would suggest not. Let's think carefully about these things so that we can not inhibit people, but also not distract people. So what are your thoughts on this somewhat controversial topic? I would really like to know. If you could drop me a note, leave a comment where everybody can see it, whether you're watching the podcast, uh, listening to the podcast or watching the video, please leave a comment because we learn best 
when we learn in community, learning together. And also, please pass the link to this recording on to one other person who you think might be interested and might benefit. I'll be very grateful for that. So until the next time we uh, hear each other, see each other, or meet together, I pray that the next time you gather with other people to worship our God in corporate worship, I pray it's fulfilling, it's meaningful, it's deeply enriching, and it brings God great glory. Take care and God bless.